Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you had a wonderful day. And uh, so this is the last session. You're getting close to going home. The theme that I just want to bring before us, uh, we've called it uh, the supernatural in the workplace, which is really uh, bringing, uh, uh, just opening up our lives, both personally and also in the impact we have in what we, uh, in the, in, in what we do and the way we impact lives, uh, opening it up to the supernatural. When we say supernatural, we're simply saying God coming through in a way that's beyond the natural. Right? So I just want to share very simple thoughts on that. Two truths and three practices that you and I can, uh, uh, can uh, take back with us when we talk about you know, bringing kingdom influence to the workplace. Uh, both these th thoughts are not very profound. They're very simple, but I think it's just to go, good to go back with this reminder. The first truth that I just want to bring to us, and uh, yeah, okay, thanks, is that God cares about us in the workplace. It's a very simple thing, right? See, God cares about you in your workplace. There isn't a disconnect between your church life or your devotional life and who you are in the workplace. God cares about us. You know, he cares about the things that we care about in the workplace. For instance, you know, we care about things like getting a job. His word says, I am the Lord who gives you the power to get wealth. Right? That's Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. We care about, you know, uh, doing well. Well, he says, I will bless you in all the work of your hands. Right? We care about getting a promotion. Well, he says, I'll make you the head. And... We, say, we know Psalm 25, promotion comes from the Lord. Right? So he cares about these things. We care about decision making. God help me, guide me in my decisions. He says, you know, I will lead you. I will teach you. I'll help, help you make those decisions. We care about execution. And okay, I've got a great idea, a great strategy. God, but if the execution is messed up, everything is gone. So he says, yes, I will, I will bless the plans that you have. I will bless you even in that. Uh, we care about, you know, several things we talked about. We care about having favor, and it's God who surrounds us with favor, right? So God really cares about each of these aspects, and it's not, uh, that's not that, you know, God uh, uh, doesn't engage, or God doesn't involve. So what I want us to, want to lay on our hearts is expect God to come through for you in all of these areas, so it's not like, okay, God, I'll go to work, I'll, I'll do my best and see outside. No. Expect God to come to you because he cares for you. And God still works miracles in the workplace. Amen? He still works. I mean, we read in the Bible, we know the miracle stories in the Bible. You know, Peter toiled all night, he didn't catch anything. And then in one moment, he puts his net out and boom, gets a boat sinking, net breaking load of fish. Right? Ah, Jesus has to pay taxes. Ah, okay, no money in the pockets. <laughs> Peter, go cast your hook in the sea. The first fish you catch will have a coin in its mouth. Pay taxes for you and me. Right? Ah, it's a workplace miracle. Right? So you have miracles in the Bible, and you can put many others. And God still works miracles in the workplace. Amen? So God is interested in those things that you're interested in. God is interested in giving you the desire of your heart for the workplace. He's interested in that. Sometimes we think, ah, my desires only have to be lead worship, read Bible, pray, or, you know, spiritual things. And we think like any desire that I have, as far as the workplace is concerned, ah, it's a little secular for God, too secular for God. No, no. God wants to give you the desires of your heart concerning your professional life, whatever it is. And so I'll just share a few stories from my own life. You know, when I was in my 12th, 11th and 12th grade, so this is when I, when I was 16, 17, that's when I had the desire in my heart, God, I want, to have a, I want to form a Christian company. And I used to dream in those days, right? So I actually designed my logo, company logo. I had a name for my company. And basic, the motivation was, God, these things that I'm reading in the Bible, I want to use it in the workplace. And I want to have a Christian 
And I didn't know too much in those days. There wasn't much literature hardly. There weren't any of these kinds of conferences. Nobody was talking about God at work. And you know, all of that was not non-existent, at, uh, at least uh, to me. I never heard of those things. But inside me, there was like, God, I want to have a business. I want to have an enterprise. But I apply these principles. So from my tw- 11th and 12th standard through engineering college, that was inside me. The dream was there. Uh, I would dream about it. And of course, I was, you know, I used to read magazines. I was business magazines, read this. And the dream was there. I went to the U.S., did my studies, started working. And uh, Amy will attest to this. Every six months, I had my... This, this desire surging in me. I said, okay, I need to start my business. I need to, I need to do my own thing. And, but I couldn't because uh, well, while we were in the U.S., we were always thinking about we have to go back to India. So uh, even though we had a ministry in the U.S., that was easy. We could you know, hand it off to somebody. But the business, I didn't know what to do. But this was always there. And I remember December of 2000. Uh, we had packed up. I had already, we were planning to move back to Bangalore. I had already set up interviews with some IT companies in Bangalore. Uh, you know, to, my, the plan was uh, we will work and start the church. That was the plan. So I set up these interviews. But in December, as I'm moving back from Chicago, the company I was working for, the owner comes and says, can you work for us from India? Right? And I didn't know what all that would entail. But uh, I said, see, I don't know. I'm going to go back. I'll find out and I'll let you know. So I come back, I do two of these interviews with two IT companies in Bangalore. I had this option, and then uh, I chose that option. I said, yes, I will work for them. And w- within one month, I had this baby in my hands. A company was formed. A desire that was in my heart, in my 11th and 12th standard, God fulfilled it, but it in his own time. And it happened. And it was a workplace desire. God, I want to have a company that, that I can use Christian principles. I can use all these new creation realities that I've read in the Bible that I can put it to practice. Not that you can't do it when you're working for somebody else, but it's a different thing when you're running your own business where you have the liberty to do certain things. You have the liberty to call your employees and say, we're all going to pray. You know, you have those, you know. And so we put that into our employee guidelines. You know, staff, when you're hiring a person, we let them know beforehand, every day there's going to be prayer here, and you're welcome to participate in all of that. So uh, there was that, and and God gave that in my hands, you know. Uh, And so uh, the reason I share that story is because God will give you the desire of your heart for your professional so don't be afraid to take it to God. Say, God, this is what I, I have this dream. I'm, 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 God, I'm carrying this inside me. God, take me in. But I, there is a preparation time, of course. You go through learning. Do what you have to do. Do it well. But God is there. He's interested in you. He cares about you in your workplace. He will break through for you. He will come through supernaturally for you. And he will give you the desires of your heart. So don't be afraid uh, to take that up for him, before him. Amen? Now... You know, so that's just, uh, just to show, show you that God works workplace miracles in, even in our day. And I'll just share one, another story along this line. You see, running the company, uh, things were going great in the early, early days. But about eight years later, I think this was 2008, 2009, things were really bad. And uh, uh, the company was in debt at that time. And we were 70 lakhs in debt. Now, how you look at it could, you know, it could be big for you. It could be small for you. For, for us, it was big, 70 lakhs in debt, negative by 70 lakhs. And I was like, now, most of this debt was personal because I had invested my own money there. So other, other than my own investment of money in there, the so company had to repay back to me. Uh, we had rent that we had not paid for several months. But uh, we had a good rap over the landlord, and so he was understanding. He said, okay, as soon as you get the money, you can pay. But essentially, there was a time when the company was 70 lakhs negative, Right? And I can tell you this, you know, Sundays you stand, hear me talk about faith. That's the time I, I used the faith I'm talking to you about. I used to walk into the office and I used to speak and say, I speak to this mountain of debt. I command it to be moved. See, faith works. Now, you don't have to wait till you get to 70 lakhs in debt. But I'm telling you, this is what I did. This is a real life story. Okay. I used to speak to the dead. I said, and then I used to call things. But we talk about calling things that are not 
as though they were. So I'd walk into the, my office and I would say, in Jesus' name, all my employees are blessed. We are prospering as a company. We are going to send employees overseas on contracts and so on. I should declare the things that are not as though they were. God's word works. Amen. Now, in that journey during that time, I remember January of one that year, one of that one of those years, I reached a point where I had no more money to put in the company to keep it going. And that month I had to pay our staff. I had no money, zero. And I remember Sunday I preached in church, everybody's happy. Monday I'm driving to work under tremendous pressure. I'm saying, God, this month I have no money to pay all the employees. As I'm driving, and some of you have heard the story, so please forgive me to repeat this. But as I'm driving, a word drops into my spirit. And the word is this, God who put money in the mouth of the fish can put money in your bank account. And I'm driving aboard Hebal flyover. Those days, it, have, traffic wasn't heavy. <laughs> and right on top of the Hebal flyover, I'm alone in my car, and I speak those words up. I say, I declare in Jesus' name that God who put money in the mouth of a fish will put money in my bank account. I'm talking about the bank account of the company. And I had to pay the staff by the end of that month and no money. So I go to the office. Now, it looks crazy. You're talking about, you know, modern day. How is money going to come into your bank account? And here's what happened. I went to the office that day. I got an email from a client that we'd done work for about two, about two years ago. And on one of the projects, we lost, I mean, they canceled the project, and so we took a huge hit. So here I get an email from the CEO of the company saying, two years ago, uh, this and this happened. We owe you money. Please tell us how much we owe you. And so I went back, pulled up all the work that we'd done, and I said, I wrote to him, I said, see, according to my calculations, you owe us $80,000, but if you will pay me $40,000, that's enough. I'll close this. Because at that time, things were very bad for many, you know, globally. And by end of that week, there was $40,000 in the bank account. Amen? Now, you know, for us at that time, it was huge. But you see, God works. His word works. Amen? God who put money in the mouth of a fish can put money in your bank account. And that customer didn't have to reach out to me. He didn't know what we were doing. This was two years ago. He, didn't, he had no idea where we were, what we were doing. Two years ago, we ended a contract, but now he's coming back. It's God who set that up. And, you know, what happened subsequently is an amazing story. I always look back and I thank God because uh, we got a contract with a company in Ireland uh, to build their healthcare software product uh, for the U.S. market, and things just went up. We that 70 lakh debt was all gone. We raised up salaries for all our employees. The employees went overseas. Some went to the U.S., some went uh, to Ireland to work. And, and, and you know, the, the, the words that I was speaking but we had nothing actually came to pass. So what am I saying? God works. His word works. You can see the supernatural happen in your workplace. Amen. So things changed dramatically, and, and, and everyone was so blessed. But we were down 70 lakhs. God changed everything, and uh, everyone. I mean, when we closed the company, we closed on a high. We closed with tremendous success, and I have no regrets in our looking back. But I've seen God work in the business, in the marketplace. Amen. So God cares about you, and he works supernatural things in our lives today. So the second truth I just want to leave with us is this, that God anoints and empowers us to influence the workplace. So not only does he care about us, he cares about your dream, he cares about your difficulties, he cares about your challenges, uh, but he also empowers you, he anoints you for the workplace. And you and I need to tap into the anointing of the Holy Spirit for the workplace. You know, if you look at Joseph, you look at uh, Esther, you look at Daniel, look at all the people who impacted the workplace. They were all anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was upon them. You know? So there is an empowering, there is God's anointing so, on you. 
uh, in the workplace. So when you go to the workplace, don't go in there as, oh man, I've got to try to follow all these rules and got to do this. Do this. Hey, Holy Spirit is with you. Just as we have anointed preachers, uh, we have anointed pastors, and we have anointed prophets. We also have anointed CEOs, anointed salesmen, anointed whatever. Amen? So say this to me, I'm anointed for my work. Right? You are God's anointed, God's empowered minister in the workplace. There's anointing for you. And Holy Spirit is all encompassing. And Isaiah 11 and verse 2 tries to capture that. He is the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of counsel, Spirit of knowledge, Spirit of might. He's all of this. So you need counsel? He's there. You need wisdom? He's there. You need understanding? He's there. You need strength? He's there. He's all encompassing, that anointing, the Spirit of God upon you. He, he covers all that you need creativity. Solving problems, solutions, whatever. Holy Spirit, that anointing on your life. You tap in to the anointing of God for whatever you're called to do uh, in the workplace. Whatever your role is, whatever your function is, there's an anointing. And by that anointing, you try to influence your situations, try to influence people, try to influence the culture uh, that you're working in. Amen? So three simple practices now, and then we will pray. How can I tap into all this? We've heard this over and over again. I think all three speakers uh, shared along this line. The first one is to pray and listen. You know, pray and listen. You're about to, you know, architect a software system. Say, God, help me. Quick prayer, like many of them said. <laughs> but listen, because he's going to download information. He's going to download information. I mean, whatever you're doing, you're designing a system, you're ha having to close a sales deal, you're having to price a, uh, you know, come up with a quote, your proposal, whatever. Pray, listen. Listening is what makes us prophetic, meaning people who hear from God. And that's what gives us the edge. That's what's going to help us solve problems. That's what's going to, you know, bring those, those like, but the moment saying those profound words that come out of your mouth, which after you said, like, you're saying, where did it come from? Well, it came from God. So you pray and listen. Ideas. When you're praying, God, give me ideas. Now, of course, I still do the same thing today, maybe in a different setting. But it's the same thing. Stay in tune because God wants to speak. Or if you want to use modern language, God wants to download things into your spirit. And he wants to impart that to you. But we've got to be listening. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You're a sheep even there. You're a sheep in the boardroom. You're a sheep when you are on a sales call. You're a sheep uh, when you are, have to design something. You're a sheep when you have to solve a problem. You're a, you're a sheep when you have to come up with a, a, a strategy. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. And he's got the idea. He's got the strategy. He's got what you need for that situation. So you pray. But listen, listen, and then by inspiration, by inspiration, you know, do your work. Do your work by inspiration. Be an inspired person in the workplace. Secondly, exercise spiritual authority. You see, this, this thing about spiritual authority, thing about faith, it's not just things that we, you know, do in church. You go to your workplace, speak, speak words of faith. Jesus said, if you have faith, you will speak to the Speak to the mountain. Now, the place where the devil is most active is not the church. It's the marketplace. Let me repeat it again. The place where the devil is most active is not the church. It's the mountain. So where do you think believers have to be exercising spiritual authority? In the church or in the marketplace? Like say it with some conviction. You know. <laughs> in the marketplace. That's where. You know, so the casting out of devils, the binding, the losing, it should be happening in the marketplace. 
And we all come to church to do it. <laughs> hey, but it's going to be happening. Why? Because that's where the enemy is very active. Now God has placed authority in you. He's given you authority. So you use it in the marketplace. So how, what do you mean? You know, uh, if, if you see things, you know, there are evil spirits that are motivating the wrong things behind people. So don't just look at people. Look beyond them. Look beyond the influence coming on them. And you can take authority over that influence. The spirits that are at work. Now what did what the devil tell Jesus? He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. The, and the glory of it. If it was today, he would have probably shown him Apple, Microsoft. <laughs> everything, everything, everything. You know, all. And he said, look what is in my control. Bow down and worship me and I will give you. I'm not saying the people are bad. I'm saying the influence the enemy has in all these spheres of society. And all this outside the church. And that's where you are spending six, five to six days a week. So it is there that you exercise your faith in God. Because the Bible says, we overcome the world, 1 John 5, 4, we overcome the world through faith. So exercise your faith out there in the marketplace. Speak to your mountains, speak to the wind, speak to the storms. In the marketplace, whatever those storms mean to you in the marketplace. Take authority over the spirits that could be operating and influencing people. So you're not dealing with people, you're dealing with the spirits behind it. So I take authority over that spirit of corruption. I take authority over that spirit of deception. I take authority over that spirit of oppression. I take authority over that spirit of injustice. I take authority over that spirit of unfairness. I take that authority over that spirit of hostility. I take authority over that spirit of confusion. You're a believer. You're in the marketplace. The devil's there. What are you supposed to do? Exercise your spiritual I hope you agree with me, all very silent. <laughs> right? So the third thing is this, take risks. Or in theological terms, it's called stepping out in faith. But you take risks to display God's glory. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. See, there is believing in order to see if you believe, you will see. Believing is a verb. It's an action. It's a step you take. So you take risks. Take steps of faith to see, to display God's glory. Right? It, mean, it may mean taking up a big challenge that you've never done before. It may mean taking on responsibility you've never carried before. It may be going on an assignment you've never gone before. Taking risks. But because you know God is with you. Because you know God will come through for you. Uh, because you know God is empowering you. Because you know the anointing of God is on you. Uh, it may also mean taking risks like praying for people. Right? Of course, you do it at the right time, the right place. I'm not saying you know, abuse your, uh, misuse what you have in the workplace with wisdom. But take risks. When somebody says, I have a need, you say, so I'll pray for you. You know, uh, uh, you know, give a book. Pray. Love. Take risks. Step out in faith. Because that's the way God's glory is displayed through you and me. In the workplace. Amen. And God wants to be glorified. He wants his glory to be displayed. But he needs people who will step out in faith. I want to encourage you in your workplace. Step out in faith. Pray and listen. Exercise your authority. And step out in faith in the workplace. To minister to people. To reach out to people. Love to people. To love people. Take on assignments. Whatever. Saying, God, I'm doing it because I believe. Because I believe. Because I believe. I'm doing this. Amen? So, the day's almost ended. We're going to take a few moments to pray. Let me see. Uh, and uh, I just want us to, you know, just 
personal time, just pray. And as the Lord leads me, I will pray for specific things right now. But I want you to pray and say, God, I've spent this day here. I've learned a lot. I've heard different people share things. But I'm your servant. You are God's servant, each one of us. You're God's representative in that workplace. I want you to pray and just say, God, let your glory be seen through my life. Be glorified through my life. Father, I just pray for every person here, God. Each one of us are ministers of Christ. We are at different levels in our journey, different stages in our journey professionally. But I ask for the power of your spirit to rest upon every one of us. That we will go out as anointed people. Empowered people in our places of work. The Holy Spirit being our helper. I ask, Lord, that you will enable us to listen to the Holy Spirit, to the wisdom that comes from Him, to the guidance, the direction, the counsel that He brings. I pray, God, that there will be wisdom flowing through our lives in whatever we do. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be seen in our lives, in our work, in our places of work. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be seen. Father, I just pray also right now that by the power of your Holy Spirit, break chains that hold our hands. There might be people here this afternoon and you feel like your hands are chained. And right now as I speak, I command those chains to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. They're no longer enslaved. No longer enslaved to fear that's been holding you back and crippling you back from performing, from taking on assignments, from doing things. Maybe fear is your chain, but I'm breaking it now in Jesus' name. Disappointment could be chains for somebody. You've been disappointed too many times in your place of work, but that chain's been broken. In the name of Jesus. Failure. Break that chain of failure, God. And from today, let success, let the blessing of God grace those lives. The chain of failure is broken off of your life right now. I break it in Jesus' name. And the blessing of God will be on your hands as you work, as you labor. Lord Jesus, even in this place, touch your people. Inspire our hearts. Inspire our hearts. 
to be your ministers in the workplace, God. We are your anointed, authorized men and women of God. Going into the marketplace, going into those seven mountains to make a difference for Jesus Christ. To be salt and light. Touch each one. And God, I pray for the release of wisdom for those difficult situations that people face in the workplace. Difficult people to deal with. Difficult bosses. Difficult team members. God, let your wisdom come through. By wisdom, let them see those situations resolved in the name of Jesus. Let your ideas come. And Father, we pray for workplace situations where things have not been fair. But by your anointing, God, release into their lives what is due unto them. But things may have been withheld, where money may have been withheld, where increases may have been withheld, where bonuses or incentives may have been withheld. What was promised was withheld. But God, break those things. And what is fair, let it come through to your people. We thank you, Father. We thank you. And Lord, we pray that each one of us will touch many lives for your kingdom. That because we are where we are, the hearts of many will be brought to Jesus Christ because you've placed us where you've placed us. Give us that influence, O oh God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are an anointed servant of God in the marketplace. Amen. You are no less anointed than pastor, preacher, apostle, prophet. You are anointed for the marketplace. You're God's anointed servant to the marketplace. So thank you one, once again. I'll hand this off to Tarun and uh, or Brian. Who's gonna, Brian is going to take over and and uh, they'll bring this to a close. Thank you. God bless.